This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 908, The Reluctant Financial Voyeur, by Grumpus Maximus of grumpusmaximus.com. And I'm Dan, I'm your host here at Optimal Finance Daily. Welcome to another edition. This is, of course, where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And let me ask you a quick question. Do you think a community is hard to build? Well, you're right. If you use Facebook groups or you're managing a mess of different services, But with a mighty network, you're able to build a community that's so valuable you can charge for it and so well-designed that it essentially runs itself. Right now, they're offering the best deal they have available anywhere at mightynetworks.com slash OFD. You get three months free when you sign up for a year, but you have to go to mightynetworks.com slash OFD. This is their very best deal. It's three months free, so go right now to mightynetworks.com slash OFD. For now, let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. The Reluctant Financial Voyeur by Grumpus Maximus of grumpusmaximus.com Foreclosure from the Great Recession Over the past two work weeks, I helped financially counsel a fellow officer whose residual financial issues from the Great Recession stood to impact his career. There we were, almost 10 years from the start of the downturn, looking at foreclosure documents starting in 2009. He'd only settled the foreclosure within the last year, and the DOD wanted answers. In some ways, I could hardly believe it. In other ways, it was a sobering reminder about the lasting impact that event will have on American society for years, possibly generations to come. It also proved an interesting glimpse into another financial way of life. I found a life almost alien to mine, because decades ago, my fellow officer chose to build wealth through rental properties. Despite my personal negative history with the 2004 property purchase, as I related previously in a blog post here, I hold no ill will for those who choose property investment as a method for building wealth. If it works for them, that's great. However, my comrade-in-arms had specifically chosen a highly leveraged method for acquiring rental properties. As I questioned him on the simple details that he should have known from using this strategy, I quickly realized he lacked the acumen for it. My fears were not allayed when we looked into his family's monthly budget, or should I say lack thereof. For someone who chose a wealth-building strategy whose success hinged on an ability to pay multiple mortgages on multiple rental properties monthly, he had almost zero awareness of where his family's money went each month. Without trying to judge, it absolutely floored me. As the five readers of this blog will attest, I'm a big proponent of tracking your money no matter what, but even more so in a case like this. In truth, I felt bad for him. My coworker is not a bad person. He's one of the kindest, most willing to give people I've ever met in the military. However, he was floundering both financially and personally. Needless to say, many of our conversations centered around a need for a lifestyle change on a personal and familial level. Despite all of this, when my comrade added up assets and liabilities, his net worth was almost equal to mine. When added to his pending pension, that's no small amount. In many ways, it felt like Tweedledee and Tweedledum were sitting next to each other. Me, as I've related on this blog, who bungled his way through wealth accumulation based mostly on equities, of which there are more stories to come, and my coworker, who had done the same through real estate. The only major difference, and I remind myself of this humbly, is that my comrade's financial route led through the dangers of losing their career. Mine did not. Again, not judging, but I prefer my method. It suits my personality and lets me sleep at night. Other people have a different tolerance for risk than me. To each their own. Just make sure you got the cash when the heater and refrigerator break at two separate rental properties in the same week. If you don't, you're playing in the wrong league. Lessons learned. So what's my point? I don't know exactly. I wrote this in hopes that I might figure out what I should take away from this glimpse into another person's financial life. Originally, I typed this as a Facebook post for the group that I run as a companion to this site called Golden Albatross Golden Handcuffs. When I saw the length, though, I decided to transfer it over to the blog instead. No use wasting some possibly insightful thoughts on the transient forum that is the Book of Face. I believe one point worth mentioning from this episode goes back to the Warren Buffett quote that I used in a previous blog post. It was the quote about not needing to make too many correct financial decisions in life as long as you don't make too many wrong ones. The saying seems true in my workmate's case, although they cut that line fairly close. It is definitely true in my case, for which I am thankful. I think another item worth pointing out, again, is that you've got to have a plan for your money. 
Walking through life, acquiring property after property without understanding the amount of work and savings it takes to create wealth as a landlord is a bad plan. Scratch that, it is not even a plan. Admittedly, as life changes, so do plans. However, if you already have a financial plan, you at least have a clear understanding of the underlying financial issues when it comes time to change that plan. My coworker did not possess that understanding, and it almost cost him his career. In the end, I think my workmate will be okay if he chooses to change his family's spending habits and sell some properties. Actually, they'll be more than okay if they make those changes. Despite the foreclosure, they got lucky, but only because the all-encompassing military bureaucracy forced an intervention. Had he been a civilian, right now he'd either be floundering or shelling out a lot of money to a good CPA and a shrink. I sincerely hope my coworker grasps the lifeline the military threw him and pulls with all his might. That's a choice he'll have to make on his own, though. As much as I would love to, I can't do it for him. You just listened to the post titled The Reluctant Financial Voyeur by Grumpus Maximus of grumpusmaximus.com. And hey, you know, online communities can be difficult to build, but if you go to mightynetworks.com slash OFD, you'll see it's so easy and simple to set up that you'll be up and running in minutes. Mighty Networks are seeing some amazing results. An author was able to debut on the New York Times bestseller list from the books she pre-sold in her Mighty Network. And a speaker was able to build a new seven-figure business by launching a membership site via his Mighty Network. Right now, they're offering the best deal they have available anywhere at mightynetworks.com OFD. You get three months free when you sign up for a year, but you have to go to mightynetworks.com OFD. Again, this is their very best deal, three months free. So go right now to mightynetworks.com OFD. And that's gonna do it for today here on Optimal Finance Daily. Hope you enjoyed our post. And as always, thank you so much for being a listener and a subscriber. I'll be back with you tomorrow where I'll have a post from Financial Samurai. So I will see you there where your optimal life awaits.